c'est du monde de See how this sounds. Check, 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 check. Golly, that mic sounds horrible. Oh well, we'll just roll with it. We'll just roll with it. What's going on, dear listeners? Sorry we couldn't do some stream. It's been a while since we've streamed. It's been a long while since we have streamed. I know we're streaming uh, on the weeknight here. We, I don't know why I'm referring in the third person. Uh, streaming on a weeknight, very different than what we normally do, but figured I would go ahead, stream some Flint Hook. So I'm working on an article over at the reformgamers.wordpress.com talking about this game, doing a little bit of a preview of it. Something I've learned about this game is that it's actually better on the PS4. Oh, I do not want to talk to that guy. It's because he's actually going to... I think he cuts my life down in half. Anyway. Yeah, it's just been busy the past few weeks. I haven't been able to put out YouTube content. I haven't been able to stream. I haven't been able to do uh, website content. So hopefully we'll change that here. I'm streaming some Flint Hook for the dear listeners. Let's see, there we go. Yeah, that's a lot of coins I just missed. Anyway, so for those who have never even heard of Flint Hook, Flint Hook is a roguelike game. Where you play as well, Flint Hook, and you are on the hunt for treasure galore. So you can go through these procedurally generated levels to obtain loot, fight off enemies, and I think discover who you are. It's like a pretty neat little lore section in the game that actually goes uh, pretty in depth about the different characters, enemies, ships. Those kind of things. It's all centered around this hook mechanic. Which is fun? But it can be challenging to use. I mean, you guys will see as you watch. One of the cool things, though, about the game is that you have this slowdown mechanic. That helps quite a bit. Especially when you go through lasers. If you haven't played, if you have not played a roguelike game, essentially what you do in these games is you go through a procedurally generated level, get as much loot and experience as you can, and see how long you can last. And when you die, you keep everything that you do. Uh, you keep everything gained so that way you can level up characters so each new run gets a little bit easier or it's supposed to anyway I'm just really bad at the game so I'm not too terribly good at it So you just go through the levels, grab treasure, get bonuses, level up, lather, rinse, repeat. If you ever played Rogue Legacy that was on uh, PC, PS4, PS3, Vita, uh, very similar concept. 
She's very different aesthetically. In all honesty, uh, I do enjoy this game, but I think it would actually be better on a PC. Which I don't say a lot, because I'm not a PC player. So it's kind of funny. There we go. Oh gosh. Yeah, so you open chests, you get perks. Uh, these perks allow you to level up your character, do different things. Oh, jeez. Okay, that didn't work. But yeah, so, I mean, Flint Hook's a pretty cool game. It's... The thing is, is that it, it can feel like you are beating your head against the wall. Uh, because for the longest time, I was stuck... Uh, on, I think it because I, I first started playing this on the Switch, and I got stuck um, on the first boss. It took me, I think, like three hours to beat the first boss. So it's it can be a challenging game. I'm just I'm gonna be honest. And it also helps if you're actually good at the game. Doug's vest. Okay, okay, okay. But how are them trophies? LOL. What's up, Logan? Um, you know, they're actually not as bad as I thought they would be. Um, there are some that uh, require you to do, like, uh, hard versions of the bosses that you finish. Uh, there's some you gotta complete certain challenges. I don't think they're too bad. Um, but they're not ones I'm gonna go for. This is a game I will probably not platinum. But, like I said, the game has a pretty extensive lore section um, that you can go through and as you collect different relics throughout the game. And these are the relics that you can collect. So, if you collect these things, you, you unlock the lore, you learn more about the characters, those kind of things. It's a neat little game. Then your black market is where you actually upgrade your character. Uh, using the little tablets down there in the bottom left corner. So, I've only got four. I'm trying to think. There was a... Was it these? Yeah, it was this one I was going to get. The flag. You can upgrade your health in here. You can uh, get different perks, like unlock the hardcore version of a boss. Upgrade your weapons. Unlock new uh, sub-weapons. Things like that. But each time you play, so this is the first boss here. This is the one that took me three hours to be on the Switch. Uh, but when I played it on PS4, uh, just earlier today, actually, I finished it in probably ten minutes. Not ten minutes. That sounds really short. Under an hour, I'll say. Probably under thirty minutes, actually. Uh, and this is the second boss, and so the skulls of the the skulls at the bottom represent the difficulty. Um, the Diamonds with the skulls in them represent how many of these tokens you have to collect in order to get to the boss. Because each token you get, you get from completing a ship. You then give it to your little uh, compass over there on the left, and then you go from there and you go fight the boss. So this is one that I'm working on now, Gold Feathers. So you get these little booster packs. Gain more firepower against pirate bosses. Okay, that's kind of cool. So yeah, and then you have your list of perks over here that do different things like boost your health, um, increase your luck, like get your special deals in shops, increase the chances of finding sub weapons, getting, making you faster, slowing things down, um, all these different perks. And the more you collect, the easier the game gets. So cool, this game caught my attention when it came out, but yeah, just too much other stuff to play. Exactly, man. I, I hear you on that. Especially with God of War coming out, I mean, just too much to play. So, at least on the PS4 side, uh, if you have an Xbox, uh, PC, Switch, if you're looking for something to kind of fill at the time, this is, a, this is a good game to pick up, I would say. One of the things I like about it is that it's perfect for just pick up and play. 
If you only got maybe 10 minutes to, to spare, you can hop into a match. Just uh, go through a, sh a ship or two. And then you're just good to go. That's one of the things I liked about it anyway. I think... I think the controller... I think as far as controls go, it is better, is best, that, uh, words are hard, it is best suited for uh, PC. I think this would, game would be much better if it was on, um, if I had a, a mouse and keyboard to control the hook movements, the aiming, everything, really. But that being said, it's not bad on the Switch, I think the, uh, just the gameplay fits the Switch the best. But if you're going to play on console, I think PS4 uh, just might be the way to go in terms of the controller. But then again, if you have the Pro Controller on the Switch, it's kind of a wash. And of course, on the Switch, you have the patented Poop and Play, as people so endearingly call it. Sometimes these enemies will have uh, these bubbles pop out uh, to protect them from getting uh, attacked by you. And so you'll have to uh, use your hook to remove their shield. And some enemies actually... Let's see if I can find one. Okay, they don't have one here. There's some enemies that will have a, a bubble shield around them that can only be uh, removed from defeating certain enemies. So again, it just constantly throws different gameplay mechanics at you uh, in an attempt to uh, keep things fresh, to make things challenging. And depending on your level of patience is going to really determine uh, how difficult the game is, or how you perceive the difficulty. The game gives you plenty. The game gives you plenty of tools to really uh, succeed. It's just all about how you use them. The slowdown mechanic is is absolutely key in a lot of uh, more tense situations. So if you don't use it, then uh, you're you're gonna have a harder time with things. So kind of what I tend to do is when I'm fighting these things, I'll slow down time so I see where the spikes are going. Obviously that, that didn't help me there. Uh, so though I have a little bit of extra time to kind of move out of the way of the projectiles. But I've also just gotten so used to them that I just kind of know where they're going to go. So, here we go. But a lot like Celeste, the great thing about this game is that when you die, it, it's not so much a, a negative. Uh, it it's, it kind of gives you a reason to keep playing the game because you're going to constantly be upgrading a flint hook and making them better. There you go. See, so situations like that that you can use the slow mo to really help you out. Um, they will come across different shops and things of that nature to uh, buy different items, buy health, things of, things of that nature, sub weapons. Probably uh, should be used slow mo on there. But every ship is going to be uh, different. Usually not really uh, any ships that are similar or identical. And so each run is going to be different from your previous one. And again, it all kind of goes into this method of, of really keeping the game fresh enticing you to play more. And so at the end of each ship, you get these ghost gems that you give to your goo compass. It's really called a goo compass. And 
that then allows you, uh, gets you one step further in getting to the final boss. For that uh, area, anyway. But yeah, so that's kind of the gist of Flint Hook. You just keep playing, you keep leveling up, uh, you keep going to different ships. Now, at the bottom of each ship, because you get three to pick from um, uh, in each section, uh, you see the difficulty they're represented by the skulls, but then uh, underneath the name of the ship, you see these little modifiers. So you have Relic Ship and Devil's Lodge here. This other one you have Platoon on board and Gamblinger. I think I pronounced that right. You also have Purseful and Rumble Room. So these are all going to kind of let you know what you're getting into. The higher the skull count, the more difficult it's going to be. But you might get more gold for going to the more difficult ship. Or, you know, you might go to the easier one, but there's going to be a lot more enemies. So you kind of have to weigh the options and figure out which one you're going to go to because it's not exactly uh, better to always go for the more difficult ones, nor is it exactly better to always go for the less difficult ones. You just kind of have to uh, weigh your options and go from there. So. So one of the things I like about this game is it just adds variety to the gameplay itself. And so... But again, the, the, you know, uh, I think I said... Uh, I forget where, maybe I said this on the podcast, but we won't be doing a full review for this game. Uh, something we'll be doing... Uh, it's just kind of like a, uh, at a glance, like a little preview. Uh, kind of what I'm doing right now, a little bit, letting you see the gameplay. Uh, there will be a written portion of this coming up a little bit later uh, this week. Uh, all as a means to just kind of give you... Whoa. Oh, that's cool. I've never actually been in an area that had multiple chests before. Um, it's all just to give you an idea of what the gameplay is like, so, you know, maybe you're interested in the game or you saw it on the Switch eShop and uh, you wanted to play it, but you weren't exactly sure if it was your cup of tea. Well, hopefully this video uh, and the preview that's coming up a little bit later on the website will uh, help you out with that. And that's one of the things we'll be doing with our... Uh, at least with my reviews for the website, I'm going to go for the more obscure indie titles that maybe you saw on the, uh, the shop or the platform of your choice and were curious about, but you weren't exactly sure if it was going to be any good. So that's kind of why I went for uh, Owlboy in one of my reviews. That's why I'm going for this one. I'm going for, uh, I'll be writing a review for Iconoclast coming up a little bit later in uh, the month or early June. Uh, depending on when I can get around to it. Just because... Uh, something I noticed in regards to video game reviews is that if you want to review for a AAA title, you can find those a dime a dozen. But reviews for games like Flint Hook, Iconoclast, Owlboy, you may not see those. Uh, in the outlets that you frequent, so when it comes to me uh, reviewing games for our website, I'm going to go for these more obscure titles. And it's fun for me because I get to yeah, I get to play uh, you know these games that might have gotten overlooked. Plus, it's always nice to uh, be like, oh, I have to play this game for, uh, for the podcast. For the so, That's always a nice little part. Here. I believe I had that. 
So yeah, so I will be uh, kind of reviewing some more obscure titles on the digital storefronts. I think I, uh, what's another one I've got coming up? We've got uh, a review for Dandara coming up. We've got a review, well, actually our review for A Way Out is already available on the website. Dandara, what is that one? I think we're going to be streaming Trailblazers a little bit later this week. So you have to look for that out. Look for that on twitch.tv. Yeah, as always, uh, you know, if you're not following us on Twitch, go ahead and go over to twitch.tv slash trgpodcast for any, uh, and hit the follow button there, so that way anytime we go live for these uh, previews or anything like that, you get to watch it live as we are uh, recording it. There we go. Almost didn't make it. little ship has their own uh, little uh, hidden areas or different kind of uh, side rooms that allow you to find different treasure, buy items like this that will heal you. I guess I should have bought that. Okay, it's full. Okay. But yeah. So like I said, if you've missed any part of this stream, uh, I'll upload this over onto our YouTube at youtube.com slash the reform gamers. This will actually be our preview thing, and uh, just to restate, I will be putting a written review, not review, preview of this up on the website, thereformgamers.wordpress.com as well. Nope. If I stop jumping into those bombs, it's uh, not very helpful. This guy's kind of like, uh, uh, this enemy is a lot like the first boss. So he didn't have a bubble shield over his weak point. There we go. go two down two to go all right well that being said uh dear listeners thank you for checking out this preview of flint hook as always uh head on over to twitch.tv slash trg podcast to check out anytime we go live uh for these game previews and things of that nature if you missed any part of this preview video this will be its own video over on youtube.com slash the reform gamers as always, hit the follow button over there. Hit the bell icon so that way you can always be notified of each new upload that we upload to our YouTube channel. And in the comments below, why not let us know what you think of Flint Hook? Are you playing it? Have you checked it out? Are you curious about it? And as always, check out all of our uh, content that we're putting out here at the Reform Gamers or podcast that can be found on any podcast catcher. Head over to patreon.com slash the Reform Gamers if you like what we do here at the Reform Gamers. And until next time, GG and amen.